Well, it's Monday, and you know what that means. It's a new episode of Hot Sauce Takes, where I take you, the viewer, your hottest takes from a community post I post every Sunday morning. There you can comment your hot sauce takes to potentially be in the video. So these come out every Monday, and there's going to be a community post, like I said, every Sunday. So that being said, let's get right into it. Now the first take is from Pippin Ain't Easy, and he says, Michael Porter Jr. will be an all-star next year. Michael Porter Jr. heading into the 2018 college season was the top prospect. However, a back injury hurt his stock significantly, falling to the fourth pick to the already talented Denver Nuggets. Now, in his first season, he didn't play at all, and, and he wasn't really trusted in his second season. But in his second season, he showed the glimpses, scoring 37 points in the bubble. But the beast in Michael Porter Jr. has been unleashed this season, averaging 19 points, 7 rebounds on 40, 40, 54, 45, 80 splits. And according to Stat Muse, Michael Porter Jr. is having the second most efficient 19 point per game season ever, only behind Will Chamberlain who didn't even take threes. And I think this is really impressive. MPJ can basically do everything on offense as he has an athletic 6'10 frame, can shoot inside or out, he can he can attack in a 1v1 and is a really good cutter. Alongside Jamal alongside Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray tearing his ACL, he he he's kind of broken out, especially with all of those easy passes that Jokic gives to him for an easy layout for Michael Porter Jr. I am really high on MPJ, but I'm not sure about an All-Star game next year. Unless he breaks out again and Murray's out for the whole season, solidifying MPJ as the second option. I don't know, maybe it's possible, but the MB is just so stacked. There's gonna be players like John Morant or Shea Gildas Alexander, and even maybe like Kay Cunningham might be in the All-Star race next year. And with that, there might not be enough room for Michael, and I think he definitely deserves it. If he averages 25 points a game, Nuggets are a top 2 seed, yeah, he's going to make it, but that's going to be very tough. I do think that he's going to be a borderline and will make it in the future, but just with the league so talented, I'm not sure about this next year. Next take comes to us from Owen, and he says, Trey Young is one of the most hated players ever. Everyone hates him, and it's kind of strange. Trey Young has been a pretty controversial player all the way to his college days. He uses skill over athleticism as he is basically six foot 160, which is really unathletic for an NBA player. And people especially detest his foul baiting. Every fan wants to see defense, offense, passing, rebounding, but nobody wants to see foul calls all day, boring free throws being on every offense possession. Now I do think that Trey is overhated and yes, Yes, he can be frustrating with all of those calls, but hate the game, not the players. Trey has just mastered his craft, and we can't blame somebody for trying to perfect their craft. Even if it is bending the rules a little bit, he's just doing what the game says. And if I mean, it's if the NBA can fix it, they're gonna fix it, and there goes the problem way. And he's just trying to make the best of what skills he has. He is not athletic, like I said, and just with people like LeBron James, Giannis, Taco Fall, even him being all freaks of nature, you have to dominate in a different way. And, my, and Trey Young has definitely adapted, though it's not the casual fan probably doesn't enjoy it. Next take comes to us from All Nets Production, and he says, Stephen Curry is the best offensive player ever. The National, the National Basketball Association has had an abundance amount of scores, from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scoring over 36,000 points, to Will Chamberlain dropping 100 points, and many other iconic scoring moments. There are definitely a lot of amazing scores, but because 3 points is more than 2, 3's can be essential to a score. Consequently, the best shooter of all time, Stephen Curry, his name is in, the, is in the discussion for the greatest offensive scorer ever. And it's kind of tough to say, I mean, let, 
Let's first clear up that this take says offense, not scoring. So I will, I would probably include scoring and passing instead of just scoring the basketball. But Curry definitely has an argument. Steph has averaged over seven assists a game, and his gravity is just so insanely good off the ball, which somebody like Michael Jordan, LeBron James doesn't have. And when he gets doubled, he can find the open man if that's Draymond Green who might make the extra play or finish it but Curry his gravity is just so good and like he doesn't even have to touch the ball to impact the game and that's just so insane now some other all-time scorers you probably have Will Chamberlain Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant LeBron James Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry are probably the notable names but each have an argument now, there's probably a hair difference from choosing who's the best. I mean, that's just objective and anyone can have their own op opinion. But I definitely can see the case for Curry. Like, there's still, like, Steph, like I said, average over 7 assists. LeBron is probably the most well-rounded, averaging over 10, 10 assists a night and 30 points. Then Michael Jordan has the highest career average ever. From the eye test, it may be Kevin Durant because he's a 6'10", can-do-it-all offensive player. But it's definitely a tough argument, and I can see the case for multiple players, but Curry definitely has a good case. Now, I do think there might be there might be a bit of bias to, from younger players because I didn't watch Kareem play, Wilt play, or even Michael Jordan play. Even I didn't really watch prime Michael Jordan, but definitely all have the case, and I can definitely see Curry, because of his three-point shooting, being the greatest offensive player ever. Now the next take comes to us from the GOAT, and he says, Anthony Davis is the most overrated player in the NBA. Anthony Davis has been one of the most dominant players in the 2010s. By being able to beat down low and with a smooth mid-range jumper, there is a reason why AD has averaged over 28 points a game for multiple season. And that's not even included his deep BOI defense, as he is a wall inside and doesn't allow anything and can even step out to the perimeter for smaller guards. After winning a championship with the Lakers with LeBron James, he was recognized as a top five player for good reasons, but this year he's kind of had some bubble hangover and hasn't been the Anthony Davis we know. And also he had a Achilles thing which has sidelined him for more than half of the season. This has made him kind of fall in the rankings, pushing him to the 8 to 11 range, while also people like Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic all going up. Now I do think that AD is a bit overrated, but I don't think he's the most overrated. Recently, he's been on fire, and when he's doing that, he's an absolute beast on both ends. Can just dominate a game on both ends. Get a block, start a fast break, dunk it, hit a three pointer, anything you want. Anthony Davis, you can count on him for being able to do that. The next take, the next hot sauce take, comes to us from Jackson, and he says, "The New York Knicks can make the conference finals this season." Now, I clearly remember at the start of the season, everyone expected the Knicks to be the top of the lottery, not the top of the Eastern Conference, and basically having another awful season. But we were all wrong, currently be, being in the playoffs as the 4C. This turnaround is for many reasons. First, the hiring of Tom Thibodeau and the firing of David Fis Fisdale. Tibbs was seen as a poor signing at first, but he has instilled a defensive identity, which has made which have made the Knicks have the least point per game by the opponents. Tibbs has changed the whole culture of this Knicks team and I personally think that defense, if you want to fix a bad team and fix their culture, do their fix the defense. Even like the Suns last year, they were terrible defensively. Now they're top ten. And look at that. They're the best. They're the they're the second best team in the Western Conference. And I think that the Knicks have followed that same recipe that has led to being so good. Additionally, Julius Randle has worked his butt off and is the front runner for most improved. A coach just can't make you shoot 13% from three better from three. And that's just hard work. But I do think it is possible due to a nine-month break for the Knicks in the pandemic. People forget that they didn't play in the bubble. So they had all the training in the world. They had multiple 
multiple times be able to practice and get that chemistry that they need right now and just players have stepped up we have players like like uh Nerlens Noel Reggie Bullock RJ Barrett even even some players like Emmanuel Quickly who have been really su good surprises but this team is really good. Now, in the playoffs, they currently face the Atlanta Hawks in the first round, and most likely the Sixers in the second round. Now, I think that they might have a chance to beat the Hawks because they are a defensive team and the Hawks are an offensive team, and they might be able to match their match the offense with the defense, but you still have no idea this playoffs is going to be so in entertaining but i think if they make another first round i personally don't think that i don't i, don't, I personally don't think they could beat the 76ers but still making it to the second round is very impressive and potentially even alluring a free agent in the future and finally, the last take comes to us from Iconic Space, and he says, Jalen Brunson is one of the most underrated players in the entire NBA. Jalen Brunson is a 6'2 point guard who has been playing really well recently and has, re and has really gone under the radar. Drafted in the second round in 2018, Brunson was seen as an NBA-ready player, but he spent multiple years in college and was significantly older. In his rookie season, he averaged 9 points and dished out 3 assists on 52% shooting. As he adjusted more and just adapted, he slowly progressed, now being an efficient 13-point per game scorer, okay. shooting 58% from the field which is crazy as a point guard and he's basically been one of the best backup point guards in the entire nba i agree that that brunson is one of the most underrated players in the league but he, but he i don't know if he's gonna be like a future superstar but he can definitely be a really good piece for the mavericks going forward and he fits really well with luca he can play off the ball he can he can handle the ball when luca's out of the game or if luca just has the ball too much and i think he can be a really good long-term piece for this team so that being said that's gonna be episode i think 14 of hot sauce takes make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and i'll see you on next time